one of the hard things that I had to deal with was when I came back was uh, there was no appreciation at all. Hi, I'm Steve McCurdy with Give Them a Medal, and we're going to talk to former Marine Mo Jepson today. I was in the Marine Corps in 1964 through 1968. Well, Mo, Marines are not drafted. They're all volunteers, and they go through incredibly rigorous training. So why did you put yourself up for that? Well, when I got out of high school, I wasn't ready for college. In fact, uh, but I, and I was interested in the military. Why? And, um, why? Well, a lot of my friends were, were, were going in, they were going in the Army or the Navy or uh, whatever. And then in school they had a, uh, uh, a day where they had uh, the four services were represented by recruiters that came up on the stage. And we, we were all sitting, all the boys came into the, uh, into the auditorium. And uh, when I saw that Marine up there, <laughs> that was it. That did it for yeah, you. Yeah, that did it for me. Well, what did serving your country in uniform do for you? Well, I can tell you this, that the, the four years that I served in the Marine Corps, that was a defining moment in my life. It, I think it really straightened me out. Uh, when I was a kid, I was wild and crazy, and uh, I, I, I could have gotten into trouble if I, if I had tried very easily. Uh, but I got into the Marine Corps, it, uh, it taught me self-reliance, it taught me uh, uh, discipline, it, uh, it taught me also that, in fact, I was thinking of staying in the Marine Corps, but I didn't want to stay in as an enlisted man. That's why I, I wanted to get my, it, it made me see the light in effect, that I needed to get that college degree, which is, is what I did. Well, then what was it like as a kid? Were you aware that there was a, a well, war, a Cold War going on around you? First of all, I was born in Denmark. I, I immigrated to this country uh, back in the 50s. And um, this is my country. And I was very proud to serve in the Marine Corps, and I'm very proud of the, this country, and I want the best for this country. And uh, the, the, the Cold War period was a, a, a time of uh, a lot of concern for a lot of people. I mean, the, the potential for a nuclear uh, conflict was, I mean, it scared everybody. So you did the duck and cover drills under the desk? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had, in school, we had, the, you know, they would have these uh, uh, drills where we would have to get under our, uh, our desks. Uh, we all, you go out and underneath all the stair, stairwells, uh, there would be storage of, of, of canned water, big cartons or big cans of water and, uh, and food supplies. They were, they were all packed away in any nook and cranny they could have. Well, a lot of young people today think the Cold War was just the Cuban Missile Crisis a couple of weeks in, uh, in the early 60s. What would you say to them now? Well, I think today what I would say to the young people uh, about that time, uh, the, the, the 50s and the 60s, God, you guys are lucky today because you don't have that constant worry of, hey, at any time something major could happen, a nuclear uh, uh, war could start because that was prevalent on everybody's mind at that time. And so in society at the time, I mean, people, uh, they, they, had, uh, they dug um, bomb shelters in their backyards. In fact, I helped a, a neighbor of mine dig a, 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 um, a, a large hole, which he then concreted in to make a, a bomb shelter. Well, you were 19 years old. You were a Marine in Vietnam. What did you think your mission was? What did you think, what were you aware of? as you know, that the domino theory uh, was very prevalent. And so we kind of felt... Explain that to me. Dick. Well, the domino theory, I guess, was that uh, if a, 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 any country that fell to communism would then lead to another country to fall to communism and to another. And eventually we would be facing communism here in, in the United States. So we were fighting it and trying to uh, stop it. Uh, I mean, that was one of our, in, in effect, missions that we were doing in, in, in Vietnam. When you left Vietnam uh, and went to Quantico, what were you responsible for there? I taught hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, uh, bayonet fighting, uh, obstacle and confidence course. Um, I was a jock. I mean, one of the hard things that I had to deal with was when I came back 
was uh, there was no appreciation at all. It, it, in fact, when we were when we went on liberty to go off base, we were asked not to wear our uniforms because if you wore your uniform, uh, there was a chance that somebody would attack you, and that was awful. I couldn't believe it. That was pretty widespread. That that yeah. attitude toward the military. Usually around the base, it, there was pretty good. Uh, uh, communication and pretty good uh, interaction between the civilians and uh, the uh, the military. Right. Um, it was when you went uh, went into Washington D.C. or if you went into New York or Philadelphia, that was where there'd be a lot of demonstrators and uh, you know demonstrate against the war, and uh, they showed it uh, with uh, I felt poor feelings towards the, uh, anybody in uniform. Or anybody with a short haircut, because yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you could go back and do everything over again, what choices would you make? If I had to do over again, I'd do the same thing. Even though they were going to shoot at you, even though you were going to trap through jungles with four guys. Um, Vietnam, like I said, was, uh, was a defining moment. Certainly, it was. There were some tough times, but when I think of Vietnam, I try to think of the good times. And so it was Christmas, and we were, there must have been maybe 40 or 50 Marines sitting around uh, on boxes, and, uh, and uh, we, had, uh, we were drinking beer, just having a good time. And some Marine somewhere had gotten a Santa Claus suit, and he had put the Santa Claus suit, so we all came, he came in, and we all came, took turns coming and sitting on his lap and having our pictures taken. In fact, the picture is on, I think it's up on the wall there. Anyway, then somebody got a, um, a guitar, and we started singing Christmas carols. <laughs> and we were just having a great time. And then somebody started Silent Night. And <laughs> they're holding a dry eye in the place. Even among Marines? <laughs> Not even amongst all those Marines, I'll tell you. It was, it was, I'll never forget the moment. When you see servicemen in public places now, how's that different than it was then? Well, you go through an airport and, and you see uh, soldiers, sailors uh, in uniform, and there is that feeling in, from the people that see them. They, 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 they nod, they say hello, and they say, hey, thank you for your service. Uh, and that, I think, is, is a much better um, way to treat, certainly, uh, the, the, the people, that uh, the men and women that serve in our, in our armed forces today. Because... After Vietnam, or during Vietnam, it was, it was really uh, it was sad. Well, you know, for several years there have been a number of veterans groups that have tried to get Congress to become aware of the contribution of Cold War veterans. And in fact, there are a number of co-signers of a bill in Congress right now to, uh, to get the Cold War veterans recognized. In the meantime, a number of National Guard units and uh, veterans groups have already uh, endorsed a medal. And it's my pleasure today to present you with the United States Cold War Commemoration Medal on their behalf. Mm. Well, thank you. This is, <laughs> this is very nice. It's long overdue, but thank you for your service. Thank you. During one of the greatest periods of tension that America and the world have ever faced, its veterans have gone unrecognized and largely unthanked. And we're here to change that. I mean, one of the hard things that I had to deal with was when I came back was uh, there was no appreciation at all. We want to give them a medal. Go to givethemamedal.com and learn how to honor your Cold War veteran and to have them be next as we cross America to give them a medal. <laughs>